Here at 4kcc.com, we use a lot of run commands on our Windows 10 machines. In this video, what I want to do is I want to share with you five run commands that I think everyone should know, be able to run very quickly without having to look up a list, and they'll help you in doing certain things on your Windows 10 computer. So before we get started, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. We publish computing related videos all the time and I don't want you to miss any of them. All right, once again, in this video, I'm going to show you five run commands in Windows 10 that I think you should all know. Let's get started. Of course, before you can use a run command, you have to know where to type it. There are two common and quick ways to get to the run command box. One of them I talk about in my blog of Windows 10 keyboard shortcuts. This is number two in the series of them. If you scroll down, you'll see the Windows key plus the R key. If I hold down the Windows key and press the letter R, the run command box shows up in the lower left hand corner. By the way, if you're not a subscriber to my blog, I invite you to go and have a look, subscribe. It's a free computer education. There's tons and tons of posts, way more than 500 now. So visit us at 4kcc.com forward slash blog. Now the second method to get the run box up is to go to the start menu and instead of left clicking, which is the common way you would use the start menu, we're going to right click. And when we right click about three up from the bottom, you'll see the word run. Now we left click on the word run and we have the run box. So those are the two ways to get the run box up that we can type these commands that I'm going to share with you. Once again, these are five run commands that I think everyone should know and be able to use without having to look them up. The first one we're going to talk about has to do with finding out what version of Windows 10 you have. Many times when you're looking to install some piece of software, something like that, it will give you the minimum requirements. And one of those requirements is often which version of your operating system you have. In order to find that out quickly, in the run box, we're going to type win, W-I-N, and V-E-R. Pretty easy to understand where that came from, right? Windows, what version? Win, ver. Then we simply hit OK. A box appears. In my case, it tells me I have Windows 10 version 21H1. Remember, there is a new version of Windows 10 twice a year. One in the spring, one in the fall to winter time. So this one is the newest one for this year, 2021, the first half, H1. By the way, this version is actually not out for everyone yet. So if you go and try WinVer, if you see you're still running 20H2, that may be the latest one for you. But at some point in the next few weeks, version 21H1 will be available for everyone. Anyway, that's a quick, easy way to find out what version of Windows you're running. That's the first of the five commands I want you to know. The next one is DF. R G U I D -E F R G U I. That stands for the Defrag Graphic User Interface. I'm going to click OK, and you'll see it brings up a window and it shows all of my drives. Now, why is this important? We don't actually have to defrag anymore. Windows 10 defrags our drives very well. We don't really have to do it. So why would you want to know this command? The main reason I use this command 
is to find out what kind of drives someone has. For instance, let's look at mine. You'll see that Windows C, it tells me it's a solid state drive. Then you'll see there's a virtual hard drive. That's part of the Windows system. We see a recovery drive. That's also solid state. And a new volume E, that is a traditional hard disk drive. That means it's a hard drive with a motor and, you know, moving parts. The reason you might want to know this is if you have an issue with the drive, you often need to know, is it an HDD or is it a newer solid state drive? And this is a quick, easy way to find that out. The third command I want you to know is R-E-S-M-O-N, all right? And click OK, and that stands for the Resource Monitor. When that window comes up, you can look at your CPU usage, your memory, your disk, and it will show you what is using what. So, for instance, if I click on Memory, it shows me what programs on my machine are using memory. If I was running short of memory, I could figure out what is causing the problem. You also look, you can see the green that's in use. You see a little modified. You see a whole bunch of memory on standby. And then you see the real light blue, which means that memory is free. Now this particular computer has 40 gigabytes of memory. Most of you do probably don't have that, but it will show you what's going on. You can look at disk, you can look at network. This is a great resource to figure out what might be hogging up either CPU or memory or disk or network. The fourth command that I'd like you to know um, you might say, why would you want to know this one? Why would you want to use it? It's MRT. This is a malicious software removal tool. Even though you should have antivirus on your computer and it should be up to date, this is good to run every so often as kind of a backup to your antivirus. It's very easy. You put in the MRT in the run, it comes up. When I click the next button, I'm giving a quick scan, a full scan, or a customized scan. Yeah, that's if you wanted to scan like a specific folder. I usually do the quick scan, and it tells you that if it finds something, it will ask you to do a full scan. A full scan can take quite some time if you have a lot on your computer. So I'm going to leave it on quick and say next. And as you can see, it's going to scan <clears throat> and go through my files and see if it finds any with malicious software. Naturally, I've sped up the video to save us time. The tool actually ran for just a little less than 12 minutes and it scanned um, over 54,000 files and it found nothing wrong. Just as a reminder, this is not a substitute for antivirus. It's like a secondary thing to just make sure that everything's okay. I'm going to click finish and that tool is gone. Moving on to the fifth run command that I think you should know. This one starts out with the word shell, S-H-E-L-L, -L, and then it has a colon and the word startup, no spaces. I click OK. And this shows me what programs automatically start up under my username. This is a great tool to use to make sure that some software got in there that shouldn't be there. Now, as an example, I do use RainMeter, but Ring Central is a piece of software I no longer use. So it should not be in the startup folder. 
In this case, I'm going to click on it and then right click on it. And I'm going to go down and click on delete. So it will no longer start up because I don't use the program anymore. And that's a great reason to use the shell startup command. I have a bonus for you. This is run command number six that I suggest. Once again, we bring up the run box. And again, I'm going to start with the word shell and a colon. This time, I'm going to use the word common and then a space. And once again, startup. Notice the difference there. There is no space after the colon, but there's a space between the word common and startup. I click OK. And what this does, this shows me what is common for every user on this machine. Every user. In this case, I have two things listed, and they're fine. I'm not going to bother with them, but that's it. So in this video, I've shown you five run commands I think everyone should know, and I added a bonus. Let me just show you this. If I go back to the run, if I come over here and click the little down arrow, you will actually see all of the commands that I just showed you. So in reality, if you try these commands after you've watched this video, you won't really have to remember them because they'll be in the list. WinVer, DFRGUI, Resmon, MRT, Shell Startup, and Shell Common Startup. These are really six great run commands that you should know and should use, at least from time to time. If you have any questions about these run commands, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. That's it for this video. There are lots of run commands, and many of them would help you in using your computer. But this video covers the five that I think everyone should know and be able to use. Do me a favor. If you learned something new in this video, hit the like button. This is John Grubb from 4kcc.com. Thanks for watching our video.